Penguin Random House Audio presents Leaders Eat Last, Why Some Teams Pull Together and Others Don't. Written and read by Simon Sinek. Leaders are the ones who run headfirst into the unknown. They rush toward the danger. They put their own interests aside to protect us or to pull us into the future. Leaders would sooner sacrifice what is theirs to save what is ours, and they would never sacrifice what is ours to save what is theirs. This is what it means to be a leader. It means they choose to go first into danger, head first toward the unknown. And when we feel sure they will keep us safe, we will march behind them and work tirelessly to see their visions come to life and proudly call ourselves their followers. Forward. I know of no case study in history that describes an organization that has been managed out of a crisis. Every single one of them was led. Yet a good number of our educational institutions and training programs today are focused not on developing great leaders, but on training effective managers. Short-term gains are viewed as the mark of success, and long-term organizational growth and viability are simply the bill payers. Leaders Eat Last is an effort to change this paradigm. In Leaders Eat Last, Simon Sinek does not propose any new leadership theory or core principle. He has a much higher purpose to his writing. Simon would like to make the world a better place for all of us. His vision is simple to create a new generation of men and women who understand that an organization's success or failure is based on leadership excellence and not on managerial acumen. It is not an accident that Simon uses the U.S. military, and in particular the United States Marine Corps, to explain the importance of leaders being focused on their people. These organizations have strong cultures and shared values, understand the importance of teamwork, create trust among their members, maintain focus, and most important, understand the importance of people and relationships to their mission success. These organizations are also in a position where the cost of failure can be catastrophic. Mission failure is not an option. Without a doubt, people enable the success of all our military services. When you are with Marines gathering to eat, you will notice that the most junior are served first and the most senior are served last. When you witness this act, you will also note that no order is given. Marines just do it. At the heart of this very simple action is the Marine Corps approach to leadership. Marine leaders are expected to eat last because the true price of leadership is the willingness to place the needs of others above your own. Great leaders truly care about those they are privileged to lead and understand that the true cost of the leadership privilege comes at the expense of self-interest. In his previous book, Start With Why, How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action, Simon explained that for an organization to be successful, its leaders need to understand the true purpose of their organization, the why. In Leaders Eat Last, Simon takes us to the next level of understanding, why some organizations do better than others. He does this by detailing all elements of the leadership challenge. Simply stated, it is not enough to know the why of your organization. You must know your people and realize that they are much more than an expendable resource. In short, professional competence is not enough to be a good leader. Good leaders must truly care about those entrusted to their care. Good management is clearly not enough to sustain any organization over the long term. Simon's in-depth explanation of the elements of human behavior clearly demonstrates that there are real reasons why some organizations may do well over a short period of time, but eventually fail. The leadership has failed to create an environment where people really do matter. As Simon points out, Organizations where people share values and are valued succeed over the long term in both good and bad times. John Quincy Adams would have understood Simon's message because he clearly understood what it was to be a leader when he stated, 
If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. In this quote, I think, you will find the message of leaders eat last. When leaders inspire those they lead, people dream of a better future, invest time and effort in learning more, do more for their organizations, and along the way, become leaders themselves. A leader who takes care of their people and stays focused on the well-being of the organization can never fail. My hope is that after listening to this book, listeners will be inspired to always eat last. George J. Flynn, Lieutenant General, U.S. Marine Corps, retired. The Force, Part One, Our Need to Feel Safe. Chapter One, Protection from Above. A thick layer of clouds blocked out any light. There were no stars and there was no moon, just black. The team slowly made its way through the valley, the rocky terrain making it impossible to go any faster than a snail's pace. Worse, they knew they were being watched. Every one of them was on edge. A year hadn't yet passed since the attacks of September 11. The Taliban government had only recently fallen after taking a pounding from U.S. forces for their refusal to turn over Al Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. There were a lot of special operations forces in the area performing missions that, to this day, are still classified. This was one of those teams, and this was one of those missions. All we know is that the team of 22 men was operating deep inside enemy territory and had recently captured what the government calls a high-value target. They were now working their way through a deep valley in a mountainous part of Afghanistan, escorting their high-value target to a safe house. Flying over the thick clouds that night was Captain Mike Drowley, or Johnny Bravo, as he's known by his call signer nickname. Except for the whir of his engines, it was perfectly peaceful up there. Thousands of stars speckled the sky, and the moon lit up the top of the clouds so brightly it looked like a fresh layer of snow had fallen. It was beautiful. Johnny Bravo and his wingman were circling above in their A-10 aircraft, waiting should they be needed below. Affectionately known as the Warthog, the A-10 is not technically a fighter jet. It's an attack aircraft. A relatively slow-flying, single-seat armored plane designed to provide close air support for troops on the ground. Unlike other fighter jets, it's not fast or sexy, hence the nickname, but it gets the job done. Ideally, both the A-10 pilots in the air and the troops on the ground would prefer to see each other with their eyes. Seeing the plane above, knowing someone is looking out for them, gives the troops below a greater sense of confidence. And seeing the troops below gives the pilots a greater sense of assurance that they will be able to help if needed. But given the thick cloud cover and the mountainous terrain that night in Afghanistan, the only way either knew the other was there was through the occasional radio contact they kept. Without a line of sight, Johnny Bravo couldn't see what the troops saw, but he could sense how the troops felt from what he heard over the radio. And this was enough to spur him to act. Following his gut, Johnny Bravo decided he needed to execute a weather letdown, to drop down below the clouds so he could take a look at what was happening on the ground. It was a daring move. With the thick, low-hanging clouds, scattered storms in the area, and the fact that Johnny Bravo would have to fly into a valley with his field of vision reduced by the night vision goggles, performing the weather letdown under these conditions was extremely treacherous, even for the most experienced of pilots. Johnny Bravo was not told to perform the risky maneuver. If anything, he would probably have been told to hang tight and wait until he got a call to help. But Johnny Bravo is not like most pilots. Even though he was thousands of feet above, in the safe cocoon of his cockpit, he could sense the anxiety of the men below. Regardless of the dangers, he knew that performing the weather letdown was the right thing to do. And for Johnny Bravo, that meant there was no other choice. Then, just as he was preparing to head down through the clouds into the valley, his instincts were confirmed. Three words came across the radio, three little words that can send shivers down a pilot's neck. Troops in contact. Troops in contact means someone on the ground is in trouble. It is the call that ground forces use to let others know they are under attack. Though Johnny Bravo had heard these words many times before in training, it was on this night, August 16, 2002, that he heard the words troops in contact 
for the first time in a combat situation. Sample complete. Ready to continue? Complete. Ready to continue?